It's take two. I'm back. All right, we're going to get started in about two minutes. So that is todaysmeet.com forward slash gamify md. You know that you can put a timer and the amount of time in the Omni box and it'll automatically start the timer. Pretty cool trick. And it's a really nice loud pink at the end too. Oh yeah. Let me turn my volume down so I don't scare everybody. <laughs> Um, forward slash gamify md. Uh huh. Yeah, just write your favorite game and what kind of kept you bringing you back to it. Oh, I'm seeing Oregon Trail. I am definitely guilty of that. <laughs> that is one of my favorites as well. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, the internet is is not working for you. Okay, if if you're having technical difficulties, then just go ahead and check with the people around you at your table. That's our our low tech uh, alternative. <laughs> I love those. Oh, yeah. Yes, if the is the open, but that's what's too hard. As if you thought, whatever. That's what the note that means. All right, that's two minutes right there. All right, so let's come back. I'm going to give you about 30 seconds to finish that thought. All right, so we had a lot of great games I saw come across here. We had some of my favorites. We had Oregon Trail. We had Tetris. We had, I heard Pac-Man. Was there anything else that you all talked about? Lemmings, is that the thing where they like go off the edge yeah. and try to you make them? Them. Yeah, yeah, that is super cool. That is super cool. So, what were the features of these games that kept you coming back and wanting to play more? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. Speak it out. Go ahead, that's You got fine. better as you learned strategy. You got better. Absolutely. You got better as you learned strategy. Your decision making skills made you go further than you Absolutely. Your decision making skills made you go further in the game. Oh yeah, you can unlock different levels, absolutely. Online collaboration, remotely communicating with them. Absolutely. Now, all of these features that you all are throwing out, these are all things that you can add to your classroom in some way, shape, or form. Like for example, the ability to try again and try again, that's something that we uh, call in the field mastery learning. So giving students multiple opportunities to try. Unlocking different levels. Um, you're able to do that by setting up different hidden surprises in your game. So I'm gonna show you all my game in just a little bit. And it's it doesn't really require a lot. That's the beauty of gamification. I've been gamifying now, this is my third year. Um, and each year has gotten more and more complex. Uh, the first year we started off doing something cl called Class Dojo. Is anyone in here familiar with that? All right, so most of you know about Class Dojo. And what we did with Class Dojo is that I would give them points based on their behavior, based on their citizenship, based on good choices that they made. Once they hit 100 points, they would have a pizza party. I didn't know it yet, but that was basic gamification. The second year, um, I took a fantastic workshop offered through Prince George's County Public Schools about gamification. I started learning about different game elements I'm gonna share with y'all in, in a second. And then this summer at Google Teacher Academy, I met this guy named Chris Aviles in New Jersey who totally blew my mind with his system. I'm gonna share that with y'all as well. Um, so, for resources, there's some resources available here at www.tinyurl.com forward slash Sarah the Teacher dash gamification. We may or may not get through all of them today. Um, we have a lot of information and I'd like for this to be as hands-on as possible. So we might do just skipping around. Bless you. Can you put your back up real quick? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, just wanted to show you what it looks like. Um, but let me see your presentation there. If we um, the presentation would be available on the um, on the on the GAP site. So bit.ly forward slash gamifymd is a short link to that. Let me write that on the board. But right over here, this is a list of resources. So that's a link to the, to the presentation in general. But the resources, when you look at them, then there will be um, several resources there. So just to show you what that looks like. 
Then we have um, here a Pinterest board. I'm a huge pinner and I've been collecting a lot of different resources. I have a board on gamification and game-based learning and I should not have done that when I set it up and I'm gonna tell you why in just a moment. Um, there's a link to my classes uh, tech, tech page and the five magical steps that we're gonna get to in just a moment. All right, so when we play games, then a whole lot of great things can happen when we are playing these games. If somebody touched the phone, <coughs> it can be social. And you can have that kind of group dynamic in your classes. Um, a lot of times we have multiplayer missions where we have students do group work. That's just another word for group work. Um, there's positive stress, so that frustration. You might have heard of uh, Vygotsky's Zone of Proximal Development. So that ties into gamification as well. You don't want it to be too easy for the kids to beat your game. You don't want it to be, it to be too hard that they get frustrated and they walk away. So we have to have positive stress, trying without penalty. Again, going back to that mastery learning. The example I hear many, many people say is how many of us would not be on the road if we were not allowed to retake our driver's test? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I failed that thing like nine times in one day. So. <laughs> so with, um, so failure is definitely part of the journey. Failure can make you better. Just like uh, Adam was saying in the keynote, it's definitely part of the journey. Everyone can be a hero. Um, Chris Aviles was saying that a lot of times we don't trust these kids to go to the bathroom without a pad, but the game will trust, but video games trust them to save the world. So <laughs> you can be a hero when, your students can be a hero when they play your game in your classroom. All right, so let me give you a brief introduction. I'm gonna tell you about a specific type of student that comes to class, sits in the back of the class, talks with his or her friends the whole class period. The teacher's trying to reach him or her, cannot get through to them. Kid goes home, plays video games, comes back the next day. It's a vicious cycle that repeats itself. Do any of you know a student like that? Okay, and I'll tell you, I was that student 20 years ago. So that's my confession. <laughs> but now you have these video games that are so much more advanced than Donkey, Donkey Kong Country or whatever Mortal Kombat we used to play back in the day. Now they have, um, they're spending two billion hours, we are spending two billion hours as a planet playing video games. So, um, so to reach these learners then, we definitely can meet them at their level with gamification. All right, so we already talked a little bit about our favorite games. All right, so gamification. You might be asking yourself, well, what exactly is gamification? So I'm actually gonna throw that question out to you. For those of you who do gamify, then what, what does gamification mean to you? I'll give you a big hint. Y'all touched upon it a little earlier today when you were filling out our, <coughs> today's me. When you were talking about the different features here, um, about the new skills that got more and more challenging, um, when you're talking about the mastery learning, things of that nature, gamification is pretty much taking game mechanics and introducing them to your classroom. It can be as simple or as complex as you like. It could be simple, like just giving them points on Class Dojo, very simple, free resource that you can just give them points. Hey, Johnny, you, you know, you're doing a great job. Here's a point for you. That is gamification. Giving students scaffolding, different tasks, that is also gamification. If you, um, if you have different levels, if you put different levels, and I'll show you an example of that. Um, what else do we have in video games? Challenges. challenges, yes. So your work now becomes a challenge. It now becomes a mission. It's no longer an assignment. It's no longer a boring assignment. Your kids don't want that. But how many of them would love to have a challenge or a mission instead? So gamification is using video game elements to design, or I'm sorry, to engage and empower learners. Now, I'm gonna take you to this quick infographic. Not gonna talk about all of it right now. You can actually do that yourself. But here we have a great infographic about gamification and e-learning. And that would be like online mobile type learning. So you have game mechanics and you have fun and engaging environments. Now, why would you gamify? It 
increases your their attention span they have these experiences that are interactive so they motivate your learners um, they improve the it improves the retention of knowledge um, so there's many different ways that you can gamify so you can feel free to peruse that at your leisure so what do you need to gamify some people might say lots of money some people might say lots of time I'll tell you that you definitely do need a little creativity and an open mind these first two, you don't need that. You can gamify for zero money, zero money. So it's it's awesome. It has definitely changed our classroom. So before we start talking about gamification, we need to look at the difference between the term gamification and the term game-based learning. Um, so with gamification, then we have our game mechanics that we use to engage, motivate um, our learners. For game-based learning, then it's a very similar concept, but you are actually using games. Like for example, somebody wrote down Oregon Trail as one of their favorite games. That would be game-based learning because you're using a game to teach a concept. Gamification is just when you take these different mechanics and you bring them into your classroom. You might use points. You might have a leaderboard. You might call your, um, your assignments missions or challenges or quests, things of that nature. That would be gamification. But game-based learning would be using like number munchers or the games on Study Island or whatever to teach a concept. So is that is that pretty clear? Mm -hmm. All right, great. So that's a great distinction to make next time you look for a session. Um, if you see one named gamification, then you'll know that it's like this. If you see one called game-based learning, you'll know that it's like using games. And there's benefits to both. They're both fantastic educational practices. But they're not just for the classroom. You might have seen gamification in a lot of different ways. Um, Oh, thank you so much. Can you get to the finale? <laughs> uh, okay, I appreciate that. Thank you, thank you. I have one of those. Don't you know that? Oh, this is this is awesome. I am loving this. So I'm clicking continue. And, and then just put it on the front desk. On the front desk. Stand, stand by the board. Got you. So what do I do? I just if you just push the left click button, you should be able to switch to the next slide. Hmm. Same as with the space bar. Okay. Yeah, not <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'll. That's all right. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I'm gonna need to invest in one of those. That will make my life a lot easier. You can get a wireless keyboard and mouse combo. Ooh, I'm gonna have to talk to you after and the session. Full of great information. With a desk. <laughs> yes, you are full of great information. I need to chat with you after. Okay, but in terms of gamification, you might have seen it a lot in your life. You might not have known that gamification was actually being used on you as a customer to keep you coming back to different businesses or to keep you using a certain app. So there are some examples here. Like how many of you use those uh, those Sky Miles, for example? You take X number of flights, you get certain miles, or you use your Visa card or whatever card, and you get a certain number of points that you can use. That is gamification. Um, if it has points... You can use badges in gamification, levels, leaderboards, challenges. Um, so let me give you a couple of examples. Nike Plus, anyone in here a runner? Okay, so if you've used Nike Plus, <laughs> you know how it gives you different uh, different levels? Like you start off, what, on the black band, then you go to green, then you go to different levels. It's kind of like a Taekwondo-ish system in reverse. So that's gamification. Duolingo, anyone use that? Duolingo, fantastic resource to try to learn a different language. They give you hearts, and every time you get a word wrong, it breaks the heart, okay? Yeah, I know, it's so sad, right? <laughs> right, but um, but yeah, and it's been, it was launched in 2011. It has over 3 million users. So you see how effective a model like this is as opposed to like picking up a book and saying, okay, how do I say blah, blah, blah in French, you know, as opposed to using a video game that will give you, bless you, yeah, that'll give you different chances to learn, different uh, hearts, you know, things of that nature. And playing a song for you whenever you get it right. So it's pretty cool. So really quickly, in a nutshell, my, my learning process first started off with Class Dojo, which was awesome. Um, then I moved to a system for my technology class where I, where I set it up so that students would have choice um, based on assignments. So I'm going to take you through that in just a moment. Um, and then this year, I actually started doing um, my English class as well. And I was able to set it up with different squads, different, that's what we call it, squads, because the kids stay squad up now. So, so we have different squads. We have like group challenges, class challenges, things of that nature. 
So I'm going to definitely take you through those models and hopefully we'll get started with gamifying ourselves. Is it working now? Oh, thank you. This is awesome. Okay. I'm going to definitely have to invest in one of these. Okay. Fantastic. So I'm going to take you to the very first example, which was my technology class. So this is tinyurl.com forward slash Madame Thomas on the technology page. This is actually a living and breathing document. I'm currently using it right now with my fourth quarter technology class that started last week. So this is my class structure page. I have all of the students listed. What stage they're on, everyone starts off at tutorial. Um, in video games, a lot of times, then tutorial is where you do what? You learn the steps. You learn the basic skills. Exactly. So um, that's what they're doing for a tutorial. They're learning all about digital citizenship. Okay. Um, they level up every 2,100 experience points. So for my gamers in here, what is X? Well, I just told you the answer. Right? <laughs> XP stands for experience points. So I made this number totally arbitrarily. You can come up with whatever number you want. If you want to have it every 100 points, every million points, every you know infinity points, whatever you want to put in there, then you can do that. So this number means absolutely nothing, but it means the world to the kids. Because they know 2,100, that's what I need to go to the next level. Um, I've always put the current high score on there. I don't say who has a high score. They can see who's where on the leaderboard if they want to. Question always comes up, what if the kids are embarrassed if they don't want their name on there? Then what you can do is have them come up with a pseudonym. So we do that for uh, the English class. They have the choice of that. So coming to every game, you have rules. We have just six rules. Every single game has rules. You need to know how to win. So I tell the kids up front how to win the game. First of all, they can only do missions based on their current stage. Right now, they can only do tutorial-based missions. Um, they must complete the tutorial lesson or the tutorial level before signing in or before moving on, I should say. And um, the tutorial level is digital citizenship. It's like a huge unit of uh, digital citizenship self-paced because I don't want them doing anything else unless they have that foundation. Um, starting at stage one, this is where it starts getting fun. They get to select their mission. So once they've completed that digital citizenship unit, then they get to pick what they're really interested in, and they um, they can progress, you know, they can choose whatever they want. They just have to get 2,100 points. So each assignment is worth 700. If they do three of these perfectly, they get to go on to the next stage. So this is scaffolding. Okay. And, they, and it's also student choice. Um, some of them allow for multiplayer games. So, you know, just like how they play on the Xbox, just like you were saying about social, um, you know, they can do it socially. But if they do it socially, then they need to have everybody um, that has reached that level. For example, if a player is at stage three, their buddy on stage two won't be able to join them on that project. Somebody on stage four could, but not, they can't, they can't jump ahead. Do you find that that motivates kids to sort of stay together in their stages? You, like, if my friends are all on stage three and I'm still on stage two, then I might work a little harder to get to stage three. Do you find that that actually happens? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. The friends will put pressure on them. The friends will want to help them along. And it's good that you brought that up because my current group of students, the ones that I was just introduced to on Monday, um, they're a, they have a reputation for being a rambunctious bunch of sixth graders, right? So they come to class and I'm just like, okay, so how's this gonna go? And we started on the first day and they ate it up. Like it surprised me, it wowed me to no end because they, they are very energetic, but they're also very competitive. So the fact that there is this gamification in place then that kind of you know appealed to them. Um, so a lot of times you'll see the kids that struggle the most um, when they do, you know, when you do introduce gamification, then you see them as, you know, they, they, they're different kids. So, um, they can also, oh, I had to put this here, legally, point totals do not reflect actual grades, because, you know, they can't, it, it, I can't show them their grades. <laughs> and missions completed out of sequence will not be counted towards point totals. So I told them, because they all saw, oh, the end of it, there's Minecraft, oh, let's do Minecraft. I told them, yeah, you can do Minecraft, but it just won't count for your grades. So, you know, um, let me see. I'm gonna scroll down here a little further. And, ah, okay, one feature that really has them jumping out of their seats was this all time leaderboard. This is scores from all time. And it's like in a video game format. Like if you used to go to the arcade and people would put in their initials. So this is scores from all time. And, um, you know, gold, silver, bronze. 
Um, and the interesting thing is that most of these people don't go to our school anymore. But this leaderboard will live on in infamy. And the sixth graders are like, ah, I'm not getting it, I want to get up there. So that's that's definitely one thing um, that has been motivating. So so the assignments are hyperlinked. Um, ah, okay, so the assignments are hyperlinked. Um, this is my computer, so you know, when I clicked on it, then they kind of got grayed out. But um, I'll give you an example of two of them that happen to be very popular. Creating a game. This one is a level one project, and pretty much here, they can get up to 700 XP, and they can have up to four players. So what I did is make sure that there's a rubric aligned, um, they see the standards, and there's a walkthrough. Like a lot of kids will go online and look for like the walkthrough or the cheat guide to beat a certain game. There's a cheat guide right here, and there's even a video walkthrough at the bottom of YouTube that tells them how to do it. If you do flip instruction, boom, it goes right here, okay? So that that has worked out really, really well. <coughs> the one that they are all driving me crazy about right now is the alphabet challenge because they get to get out of class. <laughs> so for the alphabet challenge, then this, is, this one is a little different because this is the one that they all put pressure on each other. You have to have at least two people to do it, um, but what they do, they take an iPad, they go around the school, they record different things to start with different letters of the alphabet. Then they come back, they teach themselves how to use Final Cut Pro, and they piece it all together, and they create a movie. So sixth graders did this last quarter. I was impressed, because I thought that they were gonna be, I, I said, figure it out. You know, if you really, really need me, ask me. They only asked me one time. They taught themselves how to, how to make the video. And I gave them like this little walkthrough down here at the bottom, and they love this one because I did it with my group at the at the gamification training I told y'all about, so they, they love to pick on me. So so there's that. So that's what it looks like in a technology classroom. Now, I was kind of struggling. How do I do this in an English language arts classroom where I don't have flexibility over the curriculum? What needs to be taught needs to be taught when it needs to be taught. So that's when um, I was very fortunate this summer like I said, to meet the other GPT, and he gave me this fantastic template. Now this is a little scary at first glance, but once you break down what it's all about, then it'll start making perfect sense. So, I never have great hand-eye coordination. <laughs> all right, so let me just explain how this works. So it looks a little intimidating at first, but, um, but once you break it down, Learner tag, this is the student's either name or pseudonym. So this goes into the whole, um, you know, I don't want people to know where I am, or, you know, I don't, I'm not, I think I'm gonna be bullied. So they give their own learner tags that they can change at any time. Um, most of them decide to keep it with their names. So, you know, you just let it go. But um, I always put first name, no last name, because, you know, for their privacy. Um, over here, this XP, Class Dojo still has a place in my classroom. Um, these are their Class Dojo points that they earn, and I set it up, I kind of customize it so that um, so that my own behaviors I can get points for. Not everything is as simple as, you know, uh, helping others. That's still on there, but there's other stuff too that's more specific to my class. So students get points for that. This levels thing, I didn't understand, but I just rolled with it. I was just like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so here I can put their different classes their guild or their squads, they chose their names, they, they got kind of crazy with it. We did a whole draft day or whatever, you know, and they kind of went through and picked um, who they wanted on their teams. Um, but this is the beauty right here, spendable AP. These are points that they can spend. This is our classroom currency. So pretty much this comes from their experience points. Every time they hit like 50, then I release 50 points for them to spend. And they can also earn points to spend in a different way as well. like. Um, we do badges, um, so if they earn a badge, do any of you in here do badges? Okay, well, if you, you can design badges very easily, like um, there's a website called Prezi, I'll show you guys if you're, if you're interested in that, but um, you can, what I do is that I'll like give them a badge or I will tell them in class that they've unlocked a, a special achievement. Somebody was talking about hidden levels, so that's a good way to do it too. Um, and then they get these points that they can spend to buy things from the item shop. So the item shop, 
it's full of it's full of different things that they can purchase. And before I show you all the item shop, let me just tell you, I'm gonna quote Chris again, because he has totally like rocked my world in terms of gamification. So he did a lot of research and he found that the things that kids want in order are status, access, power, and stuff, okay? Status, access, power, stuff. Um, so that's in that order. Stuff is the last thing. I used to give away pizza parties when kids hit 100 points, um, but I don't do that anymore because um, some status things are more important to them, um, access things, power things. So I'll show you some of these rewards on the item shop that they have bought. Um, now, I did poll them and ask them what they wanted, so there's still some stuff on here. Um, they did want a pizza party, but I said that you have to buy it with your points if you want it, you know? So, and also there's other stuff, like they're always forgetting notebooks or, you know, and we just went BYOD in my district, so, um, a lot of them bring their phones, so I invested in some chargers that they could buy. But I try to make most of these rewards um, stuff that they could, well not stuff, but things that they could do, like um, access to different privileges. Like for example, we got a, um, a Spiro this year. Has anybody seen a Spiro? Yeah, it's really similar to what Adam was showing in the keynote, you know, the little flying thing, um, except it's a ball that rolls around on the ground. So. Walking the class pet, I think I saw it on there somewhere. Walk the class pet, so they could they could use the Spiro at any time as long as it's not like standardized testing. I put on there some exclusion supply because you know they'll probably try to do it during park or something. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's there's quite a few things um, they could they get to use my Chromebook or use Google Glass, um, things of that nature. But what they really like, they like to change their groups around. Like I found that that's like probably the the thing that they like the most. Yeah, <laughs> they like to steal members of other teams or like get themselves out of the groups and things of that nature whenever they have a, an argument or um, also to change somebody else their other team another squad's name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they can change another squad's name. What else? There's there's another oh the VIP section. There's like a couch in the middle of the room. I share my room with like a, with another teacher. So she had a couch and she put it in the middle of the room. Called